So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at my custom Dragon Ball Z episode of Bardock SH Figure Arts Bardock by CGI Customs. So let's get into it right away and take a closer detailed look at this awesome Bardock custom. Now ready, take it a closer detailed look and man CGI Customs impressed the freaking hell out of me with this figure here. This thing is so much better compared to when I first got it from a different customizer. It's the difference is just night and day, man. He he just did a fantastic job from head to toe on this figure, and I can't be any more happy with how this turned out. When I first originally got it, I I, I was so like depressed about it. I I, I was gonna throw it out, but my buddy CGI Customs did contact me and offered to uh, repaint it for me, and I'm really glad he did contact me to, and offered to repaint it because this thing just looks so damn awesome. My favorite parts is definitely the green and the yellow. We'll get into that in a second, but uh, the face here, the original customizer, I think he did a great job with what he sculpted, which is uh, the wristbands and the bandana. I think he did a fantastic job with that, but uh, CGI Customs really did fix this up. When I first got it, his head was so loose, you could spin it around so easily and now it's much tighter and doesn't spin around like that so we did fix that and of course the main issue I did have with the figure is the paint job was just it was a mess man paint was chipping off constantly from articulation uh, but th there was just paint bleeding all throughout it and, and it just it, it just really felt like it was rushed and and wasn't really taken care of when it was first made and now getting it from CGI customs you could tell this guy really takes pride in what he does and you can really tell he, he really does like doing it because uh, he did an awesome job with the figure. Uh, now the head sculpt here, the original customizer did put the scar on there. A little bit of the yellow paint did smudge onto his cheek. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get that off, not that big of a deal. Uh, he did repaint the bandana which is pretty clean. It looks like a little bit of it went onto the skin tone on the top right there. It's kind of hard to tell because his huge hair is in the way. The hair, probably my favorite part about the figure. I love this yellow paint that he used and this is actually the color of what Bardock's hair did look like in episode of Bardock. So he definitely got the uh, the yellow Super Saiyan color hair down for Bardock here. That paint just looks beautiful and it kind of resembles the premium color edition Super Saiyan Vegeta and future trunks is super saiyan hair as well and then the skin tone he repainted so now it's all matching when i got it last time the skin tone was all over the place nothing really matched at all and he did add shading as well which turned out beautifully uh, all around the uh, the the upper chest there on the neck and the arms and everything so definitely awesome job by that the shading looks awesome on this figure on the skin tone i mean and also uh when i asked the original customizer to make me a Bardock. I asked him to make it the colors of the episode of Bardock. Bardock and I did show him the picture and he gave me the Bardock Father of Goku colors which is the darker green so I was disappointed about that as well but I was just like whatever man I already have it who cares. Uh, so but CGI Customs uh, gave me the right colors this time which is definitely awesome. A two picture should have popped up so you could see the difference between the two colors for the Bardock there. Uh, the Saiyan armor turned out beautiful, man. That green is just fantastic. I love the way that green looks. It makes the figure pop. Same with the Super Saiyan hair as well. And just extremely clean paint where the uh, green meets the white and where the white meets that. Is that black? I believe that's black. I mean, before you could see black paint all over the white and everything and it just, it just didn't look good, man. On the shoulders looks awesome. Very clean paint work on this. Even on the back looks great. And I believe he uh, repainted the white as well. So really uh, clean paintwork. And then with the uh, pieces on the side of the legs, very clean paintwork as well, as you can see there. And then the red for the uh, armbands here, very clean paintwork once again. He did try to paint uh, the, the, the wrist joints, but he said the paint kept chipping off. I said, you know what, it's really not that big of a deal. Maybe sometime I could find some red uh wrist joints but I, I, I don't really care too much if it was painted or not so it's like half red and half skin tone color like I said which I don't really mind then he did paint the tail to match uh, the hair right there which also looks sick as hell when I got the tail last time there was all different colored paint all throughout the yellow and it just looks so bad man 
and it really didn't even match the color of the uh, Super Saiyan hair. And this time, since he, since CGI Customs did repaint it and painted the hair this color, he was able to match it with the tail. So definitely awesome with that. And then the pants here, I do have a little bit of like the skin tone or the white paint. Little dots of it got on there. I, I guess it's it's bound to happen you know what i mean but it, it's really not too bad and the shading on it looks beautiful man C cgi customs did some very nice shading on the pants for bardock here the only thing when you move the knee joints he already told me about it some of the paint was coming off which i don't really mind it's all right i'm just probably gonna have bardock standing up so it doesn't really bother me too much the back turned out pretty good too and then we do get the uh the boots or the the leg warmers that Bardock does wear. A little bit of the paint came off here. I believe that happened in the packaging though because when he was showing me pictures it wasn't like that before. And then we do get some pretty clean paint work on the boots as well. A little bit of red went on the boot. Not really that big of a deal. I guess it rubbed up on there. But everything else, pretty damn clean paint work, man. Awesome job on this figure. I, I tell you, I can't be any more happy with how my repaint for this Bardock turned out. CGI Customs really saved this figure for me. Thanks a lot, buddy. Really appreciate you uh, repainting this and fixing it up for me. I think he felt bad because he, he noticed how bad my, my custom looked. And he offered to fix it up and really did a phenomenal job. But anyway, let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories, I wanted to make sure my Bardock was included with a good amount of stuff. So what he is included with, we do get two alternate heads and then four interchangeable faces. So we do have the Super Saiyan head and then we do have the Powered Down head. The Powered Down head does have one face and the Super Saiyan head does have three faces. And starting with the Super Saiyan faces on the left, we do get the basic stern looking face, which is already on the Super Saiyan hair sculpt. Then we do get the angry teeth gritted face, then we do get the yelling screaming face, and then for the powered down hair sculpt, we do get the basic stern looking face with the green scouter. And the scouter is being held on by sticky tack, and the way you swap the faces is just like with any Super Saiyan or powered down Goku figure. So we do get that stuff, and then we also get two different Saiyan tails, and then we do get two different energy effects. And I decided to give him either the figureized standard model kit Goku energy effect, and I also took the energy effect from uh, Kakashi. I had to constantly heat the hand up that it was pegged into with hot water and kept pulling until it came off. And technically, I could give him any blue energy effect, like maybe the Rasengan that comes with Jiraiya or, or Minato or Naruto or something like that. So I just wanted to give my figure some options. So we do get those, then we do get two different Saiyan tails. Technically, I do have three of them. So we do have the brown one that does wrap around the waist there. And the way you peg in the tails, just like with the uh, with the 2.0 Scatter Vegeta, you just peg it into the hole right above his buttocks. And then we do get the Super Saiyan tail, which is definitely my favorite out of all of them. I just love that yellow paint that CGI Customs use. That just has a very nice look to it, a nice gloss and everything. And I do have uh, the brown tail that's like this as well. So like I said, I do technically have three different Saiyan tails. So we do get that stuff. And then we finally get 10 alternate hands. And starting all the way on the right here, we do get a pair of fists, of course. And all the hands are very simple to swap out. And then we do get the Kung Fu stance type hands. Then we do get some semi-gripping hands. Then we get some Kamehameha hands. And then we get some open palm blast hands. And the paintwork was executed extremely well on all 10 hands and the original customizer did do a very nice job sculpting on all the red pieces on each hand. But anyway that is all the accessories included with this custom Bardock. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review shall we? Now for the height of the father of Goku to the very top of his head it looks like he's around five inches and a quarter of an inch tall then to the very top of his crazy Super Saiyan hair it looks like he's a little bit over six and a half inches tall. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts manga version Super Saiyan Goku, a Saiyan raised on Earth, Sun Goku, Golden Frieza, and the Resurrection of Final Form Frieza. And this Bardock is pretty much the same height as these Goku figures, which he should be. And then here he is compared to his grandson and some other Saiyans. The SH Figure Arts manga version Super Saiyan Gohan, Ultimate Gohan, the 2.0 Scout of Vegeta, and Nappa. And then here he is compared to and it's raining if you're wondering what that sound is. A bunch of the other SH Figyards Dragon Ball figures. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectibles Sub-Zero, the SH Figyards Sage Mode Naruto, the Marvel Legends Cable, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. 
and then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. And as you can see, Bardock is the same exact size as this Goku. But anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, I'm not going to articulate it too much, but when I had it before, every time I would articulate certain points, pain kept, kept coming off. And with this, I took a bunch of pictures, articulated it around, and no paint came off at all, knock on wood. But uh, yeah, no, no paint has come off since I have articulated the figure, but we do have the ball hinge at the upper neck. The lower neck joint really can't move too much. I mean, it can a little bit, but uh, I'm probably not going to move the lower neck joint. The upper neck joint gives me more than enough articulation. And then we do get the, uh, the torso joint here, which is the upper body of the 2.0 Scouter Vegeta, so you can shift it up and move it forward and back, as you can see right there. So you can articulate that around. And then the arms here, we do have a little bit of a butterfly joint there, and you can move the arms a little bit in a circular motion. They do go out to the sides, uh, about 90 degrees. And of course, they do go up and down. We do have the bicep swivel and double jointed elbows. Then we do get the ball hinge on the wrist, so you can swivel it and hinge it back and forth. And then the Saiyan armor, of course, is on a hinge right there. And then the tail is also on a ball peg, so you can move that all around, swivel it and everything. And then the legs, this is the uh, the Saiyan armor trunks, the legs here. So Bardock can kick out forward a little more than that. I'm not going to push it too much just in case. Goes to the back a tiny bit and then does go out to the sides about 45 degrees, which is decent. We do get the upper thigh swivel. We do have double jointed knees. Then the ankles, these aren't my favorite ankle joints because it is from the Saiyan armor trunks. So you don't really get the best movement. I mean, it's all right. But uh, I feel like the ankle movement could be a lot better for uh, this figure here, which they have been updating on uh, more current Vegeta figures. And with this Bardock here, I can get him in just about any type of Bardock poses. But anyway, that is my review of my custom SH Figure Arts Bardock by CGI Customs. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this custom between a 1 through 10, I'd definitely have to give it an even 9. If you would like to know the price and want to get a custom Bardock like this or have something repainted, you can contact my buddy CGI Customs either through his Instagram, which is CGI Customs, or his Facebook page, which is also CGI Customs. I will put his information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, oh well, I guess you didn't like it. But thanks for watching. I will see you later. But stay tuned for pictures next. SH Figure Arts Bardock by CGI Customs. <laughs> Ran out of breath, damn it. Now for the height of the father of Go Poo. And then the yelling, screaming face, and the same with CGI Customs, either for.